Hi ladies and gentlemen, and in this video I want to talk a little bit about the syntax of symbolic logic. I'll talk a little bit about what it means for a formula or a group of characters to be a well-formed formula. I'll talk about different types of well-formed formulas, and I'll talk about the basic grammatical or formation rules of symbolic logic, specifically the language of propositional logic. Now the syntax of the language of propositional logic can be thought just of, as its grammar. It indicates or tells us which symbols of the language of propositional logic can be put together and in what order they can be put together. Now the syntax of the language of propositional logic consists of a set of rules. These are the grammatical rules and they're also specifically known as formation rules. Now the formation rules specify which combination of symbols or characters is a well-formed formula or a grammatically correct sentence. Now the well-formed formula I'll abbreviate as WFF in the slide, but I'll be calling it a woof from here on out. Now well-formed formula or woof is any formula that is capable of being created or generated or formed by the combination of the seven formation rules that we'll look at right now. First, every propositional letter of the language of propositional logic is a woof. So if you remember, the letters of propositional logic or the propositional letters are any uppercase Roman letter with or without numerical subscripts. So simply by writing an A or a B or a C or a F sub five, we have formed a well-formed formula. Second, if we have a formula that is that meets the criteria of being a woof, then we can form another more complex formula by putting parentheses around it and the sign for negation to the left of it. Third, if we have two formulas that meet the criteria or standard of being woofs, then we can form a new more complex formula by putting parentheses around both of the formulas and putting the caret or sign for and between them. Similarly, if we have a P and an R or some combination of well-formed formulas, we can put the sign for V between it and the open and close parentheses around it, and we formed a woof. If we have P and R and those formulas are both woofs, then we can form another woof by putting the right arrow between it and parentheses around it. And the same thing is true for the double arrow. If P and R are woofs, then we can put the double arrow between them, parentheses around it, and the result is a woof. The final rule just indicates that rules one through six are all there are. There's no sneaky hidden additional rules that will form well-formed formulas. And all well-formed formulas in the language of propositional logic can be formed by these six rules. So let's look at a couple examples of woofs and not woofs in the language of propositional logic. In the first case, we just have P, and this is a woof simply by the fact that every propositional letter is a woof. Second, we have um, a formula that looks a little bit more complex in, on number two. We know that both P and Q on their, in their own right are woofs because every propositional letter is a woof. And one of the rules allows us to form this open parentheses P right arrow Q close parentheses because since P is a woof and Q is a woof, we can put the right arrow between them and parentheses around them. Now, three and four are a ex more complex example. In the case of three, you'll notice that P on its own is a woof, Q on its own is a woof, but what we have here is a formula with a couple different operators. So let's start from the basics and work our way up. We know that Q is a woof. We also know that we can form a more complex woof by putting parentheses around Q and a negation to the left of Q. So we also know that not Q is a woof. Well, if we know that P is a woof and we know that not Q is a woof, we also have a rule that allows us to take two well-formed formulas and put them together and put the sign for V or the OR sign between them and put parentheses around it. And that's what we have as part of the formula line three. Now the last part sort of states that, well, if we know that open parentheses P or not Q is a woof, then we can put parentheses around that whole well-formed formula 
and then put a negation to the left and their result will be a woof. So the general point is that we can use the formation rules in a step-by-step -step manner to create increasingly complex woofs. So here are a couple of examples of formulas that are definitely not woofs. In the first example, you notice that the negation or the sign for not is off to the right. And so this would not be an acceptable use of the rule that allows us to form not some well-formed formula. Because those that application of the rule states that you put parentheses around the well-formed formula and put the negation to the left, not to the right. In the second example, you notice that there are just two propositional letters side by side. Now there's no formational rule that allows us to do this, and so that combination of characters is not a woof. And the same holds true for examples three and four. These are not woofs because there's no combination of the formation rules that would allow us to form these formulas. Now lastly, I want to talk about three different types of well-formed formulas. The first is an atomic woof. An atomic woof is any well-formed formula consisting only of a single propositional letter. And so here are a couple of examples of atomic woofs in the language of propositional logic. P, Q, A, they're all single propositional letters, and so they meet the standard of being an atomic woof. Similarly, B sub 12 is a propositional letter, and so it meets the standard of being an atomic woof. The second type of woof I want to talk about are complex woofs. Now, a complex woof is essentially any well-formed formula that has at least one truth functional operator. Now, if you don't know what a truth functional operator is, then I suggest you take a look at an earlier video that I'll put in the description below that indicates the symbols and characters of the language of propositional logic. So let's take a look at a couple examples. In the first example, you see not P has at least one truth functional operator and it's also a well-formed formula. So it, since it meets both of these standards or criteria, then it's a woof. The same thing with line two, three, and four. Each one of these has at least one well-formed formula and all three of these, or actually all four of the examples, are a well-formed formula. So it meets the, all the criteria necessary to be a complex woof. The last type of woof I wanna talk about is known as a literal woof, or more simply a literal. Now this is any woof that is either an atomic woof or a negated atomic woof. So let's look at some examples. So in the case of P all by itself, this is an atomic woof because every propositional letter is an atomic woof. Now, since it's an atomic woof, it's also a literal woof, since a literal woof is either an atomic woof or a negated atomic woof. In the case of two and in also four, you notice that there is the negation of a propositional letter. That is, there's the negation or not of an atomic woof. And so both of these, number two and four, as well as three, are all literal woofs.